Hey everyone, welcome back to The Machine Project. So we're gonna get started in this uh, video on MP1. This is sort of our first real checkpoint where we're gonna make a few more significant changes to the app that you're working on. Specifically in this checkpoint, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the search bar to work. So you may have noticed on MP1, the search bar doesn't work. So currently if I type stuff into the search bar and I can run the emulator and show you this, but if I do that, nothing happens. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna fix that. We're gonna build a search method that we will outline for you in detail, which is on some level probably a part of the project that's pretty similar to a homework problem that you've already done. It works with lists and you know string uh, mashing and things like that. Um, but then we'll also talk about how to attach that to our user interface and that's will bring us into contact with a lot of really new ideas, some of which we'll reuse later. Uh, so that'd be kind of more exciting in a little bit. So, um, but what we're gonna do to start is we're just going to get a hold of the MP1 test suites, we're gonna move them into position, and then we're gonna fix a problem that occurs as soon as we have these test suites. So um, no matter how you got the test suites, whether it's via an email or from the website or something, um, we need to, the first thing we need to do is move them into the right spot. So I've, oh, sorry, before we do anything, make sure that you're done with MP0 and that everything is committed and pushed. You've got the points for MP0 because we're about to reconfigure our project to work on MP1. And that'll mean that when you submit, we're gonna grade MP1 rather than MP0. So I've got my uh, Android Studio uh, open here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and run the MP0 test suites. I could also run the grader. I could go to the website, make sure that I see the score that I've earned. Um, there's a bunch of different ways to make sure that everything is in a good spot um, so that I can start up with MP1. So all the MP0 tests are working, that's awesome. Um, if I go over here to the commit dialog, you'll see that there's no changes. Um, and the last commit message I put was completed in MP1 because I made a couple of the small changes that I needed to to earn full credit on that checkpoint. Okay, so I'm good. This is a state that we refer to with Git as your working directory being clean. There are no changes from the last time you committed. And frequently, whenever you do things like copy a file into your project, it's good to be in this state first, right? So we can record the addition of the file all by itself in a separate commit. All right, so I've downloaded the file to my uh, downloads um, folder here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up my project. I wanna put it here in this directory right next to mp0 test. Now for some of you um, who grew up in sort of more of a modern age of computers with search and things like that, you may be less familiar with exactly how files are stored on your computer and the fact that there's folders and directories behind the scenes and stuff like that. Um, and there are times when people will get this wrong. So we're just gonna try to do it really carefully together. Uh, so again, I'm going over here, I'm going into my downloads folder and I'm gonna drag this uh, oh, I'm gonna to try to drag it. I'm gonna drag it very carefully over into this directory and drop it there. It's gonna ask me if I want to uh, move it there and the answer is I do. Uh, so it says, I guess we're gonna hit refactor, which is weird. Um, and now we see that MP1 test is in that directory right next to MP0 test. Now, if you get this wrong, a bunch of weird things are gonna go wrong and you're gonna be confused. So just double check to make sure that MP1 test shows up right there next to MP0 test. Now, when we use Git, when we add a file to our project, Git doesn't automatically record that as part of the changes in our uh, repository. We actually have to tell Git, please pay attention to this file. So. Android Studio is smart and it's helping us out here. It says, hey, you added a file to your project. Do you want to add it to Git as well? And I'm going to hit add. If we forget to do this, there's still a way. You'll see that it was red before and now it goes to green and there's a red squiggly. That's normal. We're going to deal with that in a sec. So if, this, if you forgot to do this, if you hit cancel for some reason, there is a way to fix this. Um, I think me, I can like right click here and, and maybe get... Uh, there will be an option to add, but I, yeah, you'll see this option add, but I've already added it, so I don't need to do that. But if you forgot, that's a way to, uh, to make sure that file is part of your repository. Okay, so I'm looking at the MP1 test suites. These are the new test suites containing the three test cases that you will need to pass to earn full credit on MP1, and we're gonna start working on one of those on this lesson. 
However, you'll also notice some errors here, right? Um, and one of the things that we want you to start to learn when you use something like Android Studio is how to take advantage of how much it knows about your code. So Android Studio is actually a super powerful tool built on very powerful uh, technology that has a deep understanding of your Java code and can make a lot of intelligent suggestions and you know improvements to it if you listen to it. One of the places that it tries to communicate with you is over here in the sidebar. And here you'll see that there are five errors. Um, now these are problems. The warnings will show up in yellow. Errors are typically problems that are going to cause something to go wrong. Um, and one of the ways I can, I think if I hit F2, it'll take me to the first error. Yeah, and the keyboard shortcuts may be different on, on your machine, but there are ways to kind of cycle through these. Um, and so what you'll see here is that the error is being caused by the fact that the test suite is trying to call a method called search, a static method on our place class, and that method doesn't exist. So if I go into my code over here, I go to main Java models, that's where it places, and I open this up, you'll see there is no search method. Uh, there's no static search method. And so frequently when we start a new checkpoint, we'll have to what's called stub out certain pieces of the code. The test suite expects there to be a search method. That method is going to have to work correctly soon. But for now, so that the project can compile and the test suites can run, what I want to do is just stub it out, essentially put in an implementation that doesn't do anything um, so that I can have this error go away and my test suites can compile. Um, so let's do that together. It's really not that hard. And this is really the only change. You'll notice that all of these errors here are caused by the same thing. I need a search method. I almost wonder, oh, here, check this out. So it says create method search in place. Oh, look at that. I would have done this by hand because I'm, I guess, old fashioned, but let's try this and see what happens. Um, and yeah, it's not, that's not all that helpful. <laughs> um, okay, so, uh, and, and part of the problem is that it doesn't know what the return type is. So the return type here is a list of places and I have to import list. Again, if I hover over this, it's gonna say cannot resolve symbol list. But cool thing about Android Studio is I can hover over this, I can hit, uh, let's see here, uh, import class, and I'll just do the right thing. There's also a keyboard shortcut for that I was about to use. Um, what I'm gonna pass this is a list of place uh, places, which we'll call uh, places, um, and then this is not called tie, it's called search. <laughs> And oh, it wants these, this is check style. It wants me to mark these as final, just so I remember that I can't modify them. Uh, if I do modify them, the modifications aren't seen by the caller. So that's why check style wants us to do this. Okay, now I do have to return a list of places. Uh, because I'm using Java, I could return null. Um, I could, uh, and that's probably a safe thing to do because this method isn't complete. And I also might wanna do like an assert uh, false uh, and it'll say, uh, to do or something like that. So I'm essentially putting a, oh, okay. I don't think I can do this. I'll just put an assert false um, because this method is not finished. I could also just throw an exception immediately here uh, just to remind myself, hey, I'm not done with this. Um, sometimes people put in like a to do comment. Uh, this is a part of the project that I'm gonna have to come back and work on. It's not finished, but I'm just putting some placeholder code in here so that I can get uh, the code to compile. I also don't like where they put this, so I'm going to move it down here to the bottom. Um, you know, you can uh, you can organize your class however you want, uh, but in that case, it somehow put it between uh, the the variable and the getter for a particular property, and I think that's sort of silly. So I'm going to move it down here at the bottom. Okay, if I go back to MP1 test.java, you'll see that the errors are gone. I've got this green check mark up here. I hope you can see this. Actually, I think my display might be covering that. Um, but let me move this, pull this down just a little bit. So maybe you can see it better. So right here, there's a green checkbox says no problems found. That's good. That's what we like to see. All right. Now the next question is how do we run the MP1 test suites um, so that we can get started and start making some forward progress. Um, and there's a couple ways to do that. Essentially what I want to get to is the point where I have a run configuration up here, similar to what I had in place for MP0. There's a couple of routes to do this. I'm going to show you what I think is one of the easier ones. So if I see over here on MP1 test, there's this uh, green arrow. If I click on this and hit run MP1 test, um, now what's going to happen is it's running the MP1 test suite. If you don't fix that problem with uh, the search method, it won't compile and so the test suite can't run. 
Now you'll see that there are three test cases here. None of them are passing yet because we're just getting started with MP1. That's okay, we'll work on them one at a time together. Um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up here into the run configurations and you could leave this here if you want. I kind of like to tidy things up a little bit. So I'm gonna get rid of this one from MP0 and then to make this look like um, MP1, I'm gonna hit test MP, I'm gonna call it test MP1 and then if I click on this box, it'll put it into my repository. What that means is that if you were working on another machine and you clone the repository, you would automatically get this run configuration along with the other ones that we provided as part of the starter code. I kind of like that, so I'm gonna hit that. Um, and then I'm gonna move this, can I drag and drop you? Let's hit apply. Um, and then I'm gonna move this up here just to kind of, you know, I'm, I have OCD tendencies, I will admit. All right, so I hit okay. Good, and now I've got this all set up and I can run the MP1 test suites whenever, as I'm working through my development. Now again, normally I don't wanna run the whole test suite, I just wanna run one, one at a time. We'll start working on one of those tests in a little bit. Okay, so this is all good. Uh, this is just showing me that the tests are failing, which is what I expected because I haven't done any work on this checkpoint yet. The last thing I wanna do is show you how to set up grading correctly. So whenever you submit and when you run the grade task, you need to tell us what checkpoint you want us to grade. Uh, we don't have any way of guessing that, and sometimes we wanna go back and work on an old checkpoint. If I run the grade task right now, let me show you what's gonna happen. It's gonna do its thing, it's gonna run a little bit, and it's gonna spit out a score for MP0. Um, so uh, you'll see, oh, there's some check style issues. I wonder what those are. Um, let's see here, let's go ahead and run the linter. Um, I suspect I made a chase, uh, change to, oh, okay, it looks like I just messed up something about place.java when I added the search method. Okay, I'm gonna run the grader again. This time, hopefully I'll get all those check style points. Um, but this is grading MP0, right? So these are the tests from MP0 about making sure the title is in the right place and uh, the title's correct and the center is in the right place and stuff like that. Okay, we wanna grade, start grading MP1. So how do we do that? So I'm gonna go over here, and again, I'm, I'm always in the project view. If you're in the Android app uh, view, this Android view, this is gonna be harder to find. I'm looking for a file called grade.yaml. Here it is. I'm gonna open up this file, and this is what tells the grader which checkpoint you are working on. Um, so I'm gonna change this to checkpoint one, and then I'm gonna rerun the grader. So, and this is a file that you'll need to commit changes to when you begin work on each checkpoint. Um, and you'll see that in this case, uh, the grader failed several test cases, but I did get 10 points on check style. And so, as we do always, my suggestion is at this point, stop, commit your work, push it, get those 10 points. That's gonna get you off to a good start on the MP um, and, and get you going. Uh, okay, but at this point, right, so I'm gonna go over here, let's look at the commit dialog and see what we did. So, and this is always a good chance to, and, and this is the right time to commit. I'm not gonna do the commit right now, I'll leave that to you to finish, but you'll see here that there are three files that we changed. There's also an unversion file. Um, this one we can add, so this is the, uh, the, the one that we also want to include. This one wasn't added when we created that new run configuration, but we made changes to grade.yaml, we changed the zero to one to configure uh, which checkpoint to grade. Uh, we added this, so this file you'll see is green. That means it's completely new. That file didn't exist in the last commit because we only had the MP0 test suites. And then place.java, we added that stub method, the stub search method that currently doesn't work, doesn't do anything, but we'll come back and work on it as we continue the MP1 checkpoint. So next step for you would be commit these changes. So I'm gonna select all these changes I wanna commit you know, write a message saying something like, well, I'll just do the commit. I'm not gonna push it though right now. I'll say uh, starting MP1, and then if I was you, I would hit commit and push and make sure that you get those 10 points for not having any check style errors. That'll get you off to a great start on MP1. But at this point, if this works, and if you push and you see a score for MP1, you are off to a great start. You've got the MP1 test suites. And what we're gonna do over the next couple days is we're going to get you to the point where you're passing all of those test cases. So, good luck.